Gentlemen, tonight we welcome the unwelcome. Jung said, until we make the unconscious conscious, it will run our life and we will call it fate. In Buddhism, we have beautiful monsters. In internal family systems, we have parts work and we have protectors, and we have exiles. What are all of these things? All of these different practices are working with the same human form, with different language, with different concepts, verbal concepts, to relate to the same single human experience. Throughout our life, we survived to get where we are today, to where we're watching this video. We survived. That process, most of it was unconscious. We, rea we reacted to our environment and we did what we had to do to get to where we are today. And along that way, the way there, we learned to react to our environment. And so we cultivated personalities and parts that protected our soft, our soft inner core. So now here we are in a group, in a group of human beings, in a group of nervous systems and bodies, and we're in our third week together. And it's no wonder to me that the third week is where we start to welcome the unwelcome. What I, what I like to do here is I like to notice that the structure of this group the third time is the charm. We're getting to come into the container the third time. And each time we've done that, we've created a sense of norms, a set of practices that allow us to feel more and more comfortable to get uncomfortable. And so what I'd like to point your attention to is that the structure of the group is starting to become that protector it's starting to become something that we can we can come into and we can expect we can intentionally allow ourselves to be more vulnerable to be more open and what i'd like to point out is that the unwelcome the parts that drive us from the unconscious we don't know what they are our life shows us that it's in there it places a finger on the places inside that need our care and attention. And so what we're doing in this space, our intention tonight is to welcome the unwelcome. It's to start to bring in these, the, use the space intentionally to welcome the unwelcome in so that we can work with it. And what do I mean when I say work with the unwelcome? What I mean is to notice tension, to notice our bodies responding to what is present in the space. And the way that our body responds that tells us that something is unwelcome is through tension. In all forms, it's simply tension. And then we label it or we, we push it away. And so tonight, what I'll invite in is to bring the unwelcome into the space. And to allow this to happen, first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set an agreement that we don't have to actually acknowledge it in front of the group. We just wanna be able to find what, what is on our edge, what is unwelcome. And then we want to begin to use what we know is unwelcome as a tool to open our hearts. And when one man takes a safe risk, takes the risk to be vulnerable and to bring the unwelcome into the space, what we'll do is we will practice noticing how we react or respond. And the way we do that is while we're witnessing while we're witnessing is we bring our awareness away from the context of what's in the space and into our bodies. 
And the three questions to ask when this happens are, what am I feeling? Where do I feel that in or on my body? And what do I need? What does that part need? And then if we wanna go deeper, we can just notice the story in our head. What's the story in our head as we receive this, as we begin to work with what is present? And so this is where one man's work begins to be all of our work because we will all have a relationship with what's in the space. And so now I'd like to just come back to our default life. And I just want to appreciate how different this is than the normal part of our life, than the default experience of our life. So just for example, when I'm moving through my day, when I'm going to the cafe or opening up my email or using the internet or washing dishes, I don't, I, I want my dishwasher to work. I want my internet to work. I don't want to be disrupted at the cafe, right? I would be upset if I got in a fender bender or if somebody broke the window on my car or if I'm listening to the news in the morning and hearing about a war that's in a distant land that's not here in my backyard. My reaction to that might be to turn off the radio, not to not want to be disturbed by that horrible news. My reaction might be to get upset and to blame and to attack somebody who gave me a fender bender or to hate the world and everybody, everybody out there who steals if somebody broke the window on my car or to be upset and frustrated with someone in line. And what I wanna point out here is that I'm not judging those, right? Like I'm not bringing these up to talk about what is the right way to respond or the wrong way to respond, but simply to notice the direction of where our energy and awareness is going. It's going out here, right? It's pushing away. Don't disturb me. Don't disturb my peace. I'm peaceful. You're not peaceful. Don't disturb my peace. Don't come in here. Okay? And that is adaptive. That's, that's what our bodies have learned to do in order to survive. But the problem is that in order to thrive, in order to actually experience the wholeness of our human experience, to connect to the awe-inspiring nature of our life experience, to really feel that connection with your partner, to really appreciate being alive, to experience the internet and be like, wow, I'm connecting to you through this device right now and you're watching it later, right? It's on one hand just incredible, but on the other, it's this a huge amount of energy, right? Like how would I ever operate <laughs> if I was just taking all of this information in all of the time? And so the brain throttles the information down. It chooses what's going to come in through my eyeballs, through my ears, through my physical senses. And then it tries to find similar things that have felt this way. So I'm not actually experiencing my life as it is. I'm, I'm experiencing as my body and my brain think it is, and then relating it to past experiences that have felt similar. So really what I'm doing is, is experiencing the reality of my life through the mirror image of like a movie. And so here, what we're doing is we're actually using the pain, we're using the unwelcome to open our hearts and we're doing it intentionally. Intentionally, we're welcoming the unwelcome and we check in and we check out in order 
to give us the container to be able to work with what's in there, right? So that when we leave this space, these experiences can be constructive instead of destructive, right? Instead of overwhelming as other traumatic experiences might have been in the past. And then through each experience together as a group, we're widening, we're deepening and widening our emotional spectrum, which literally means we are learning to experience more of our life because emotions are the experience of our life. They're the tastes, the smells, the nature of it. They're not the intellect. And so tonight we welcome the unwelcome. We bring it into the space. And so our primary exercise will be to simply notice what is unwelcome for us. What are we afraid to share? And we're gonna ask that knowing, having the agreement that you don't have to share it. We're just gonna see if we can become aware of what we aren't aware of before. Bring it just up here to the surface, and then we're gonna get to choose if we wanna bring it in. So that's it, welcoming the unwelcome. I'll see you inside.